I'm using um, a from the top method. Hey buddy, just made an appearance. This bad girl is raging. What's up everybody, I'm Ashes. Thank you for tuning in with another video. If you're new here, thank you for coming in. If you're returning, also thank you. I'm happy you guys are all here. Um, happy to bring you guys another video. So as you guys can see from the title, this is gonna be like an update vid while I maintain the car, if you can see here. But, um, but yeah, um, let's get right into it. I'll show you guys uh, the tools I need and uh, what I'm gonna be using to get this done today. So let's get it. All right, so the tools we're gonna need today are very minimal. Um, it depends on which way you're gonna do this. I'm using um, a from the top method, which is with an extraction device. So if you're going from the bottom, the drain bolt is the only extra part you're gonna need, which is obviously just a plastic drain bolt and the uh, O-ring with it, um, which at least for my model it is, it's a plastic drain bolt. Um, if you have the older one, it might be a metal one. Don't hold me to that. But um, just be sure if you are gonna do it from the bottom, you will need the drain bolt, which I'm not doing today. So that being said, all you're gonna need today is a 32 millimeter ratchet. Don't hold me to that size, but that fits. This fits like a glove for me. So I got, you know, some shop towel just in case. Got the extraction device with my long tubular end there to fit in the dipstick. Um, you know, uh, made the morning soda and you gotta keep your hydro flask on deck. For our lubricant, we're using the Molly Gen from Liquid Molly, the 5 weight 40, of course, fully synthetic. Uh, we got a Hankst oil filter, uh, comes with the O ring in there as well. And also, today we're gonna be doing the cabin filter. The car has got like 45,000 miles on it now and haven't changed that. And it's about due at 40K. So, so yeah, um, let's go, let's lubricate. And excuse me if I'm a little slow this morning. It's early as heck. It's like barely 8 a.m. right now. And uh, yeah, you know, I'm, I might be a little bit rusty, a little bit unlubricated myself. So, all right. And first thing you're going to want to do here is go ahead and uh, pull your fancy dandy dipstick out. Finally, I'm capable. Here we go. And uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, dry this off and set this somewhere. And while you're pulling that dipstick out, it's never a bad idea just to check to see if you were low or not on oil. So I'm gonna go ahead and dry that off, slip it back in, pull her back on out. And uh, yeah, we are I don't know if you can see that, but yeah, we're at the bottom of that, uh, of basically where you're supposed to be. So I'm gonna go ahead and note that for next time. All right, once you got your dipstick put out, you're going to want to grab your, if you have one, I mean, I'm assuming you might have one. This is a great investment to get if you don't, if you have like a Volkswagen, Audi, any type of German car, a lot of these are gonna be built to come from the top. But you're gonna to want to fit your end all the way down the dipstick hole there. Let me move this uh, so we can actually get in there. And you're gonna to want to push it down as far as you can go. You might run into a little slack there, but it'll go down there further. And it should bottom out like that. Um, if you don't have one of these, obviously you're gonna be under the car draining the oil. So basically, just consider this this is draining the oil right now. Um, let me put that back in there. It's kind of hard to do with one hand. Sorry guys. Let me set you guys down real quick. So this is the Schwaben extractor. It's like six and a half liters. Each of these lines makes a liter. And uh, you basically pump it. Got your nice little foot handle there, or foot pedal I should say. Hold it and create a vacuum. And she's gonna start coming. You guys see that? Once you create the vacuum, you don't really have to keep on pumping. It will just suck this out and it will start flowing down. And what will help you, which I should have done first, is crack that open. It'll create less of a suction for it and allow it to suck right out. And this will fill up, guys. And uh, you may have to periodically give it a couple more pumps, but I'm gonna go ahead and let this flow in. 
Kind of want to give you guys an update while this is uh, while this is pumping in there too. Give it a couple more pumps. But yeah, so the update on the Audi, I've been waiting for a uh, custom intake. I'm not gonna really say too much because I'm gonna make a video on that thing. It's gonna be sick. Um, but as you guys know, or maybe you don't if you're new here, I do have a full bolt on Audi, full bolt on, um, you know, we got the it's a 034 inlet pipe with the CTS turbo and the stock air box. Um, we're gonna do something about that soon. I know that flow isn't the greatest. It's not the worst though. Um, if you're worried about like an intake being one of your first mods, it's honestly not the worst flow. If you wanna just get a high flow filter and uh, do the snow delete, there's like a snow guard in there, um, you can do the delete on that and it adds a little bit more flow. But um, as far as an intake goes, that was just never on my list. You know, if, if you own one of these cars, Mark 7, MQB, anything like that, they uh they like to tax you on those intakes like three three four hundred bucks just for a plastic one um that isn't even that big diameter and you can get into like six seven hundred dollars for a decent diameter carbon intake um but yeah we're gonna do something about that intake and look at this thing it's raging this bad girl is raging i love this thing man if, like i said this is a great investment especially if you own one of these cars to be doing maintenance yourself this just makes life a whole lot easier. Cars on the ground, everything's coming through the top. Filters on the top. It just makes life a whole lot more convenient. And uh, my baby girl Roxy's making an appearance on baby girl. Come here. Come say hi. Come say hi. Hey Roxy, this is Roxy everybody. She made an appearance. Oh no, she hasn't. This is her first time. Let's go. First time on the channel. Love you baby girl. She's pretty old. She's like, she's a 12 year old. 12 13 honestly lost track but she's my baby um anyways this uh is kind of looking like i said on the dipstick it was a little bit low so one two three four that is low so if that is all i got in there let's keep pumping oh no we got more okay i was gonna say if we don't got at least five in there i'm gonna be worried but um, like I said, I did let the car run and I was kind of setting up the whole uh, the whole setup here while it was running. So it ran for longer than maybe it should have. Maybe that's why the oil is not all at the bottom yet. Because it did run for about like 20 minutes. You only need to run for 5, 10. Um, but yeah, as far as more of an update goes, like I said, the intake will be a thing coming. Uh, there will be a video on that. It will be super cool. Um, the slicks... Or I should say the radials. They're not. They're not slicks. They're uh, they're dot radials. They have been nice. I've been daily driving this thing. Unfortunately, I'm still waiting for my daily to come back. I do have a Mark IV Golf GTI I'm going through its own issues right now. But um, nonetheless, these have been getting daily like 100 miles a day, bro. And uh, they're dialed. If you guys can see, let me show you one. Like, I don't know where's the tread, the tread pattern right there. The little baby tread pattern, it's still pretty deep. I mean, they've been hooking. They are not our triple eights by any means for corners. Um, I try to keep it in a straight line as much as I can on this thing. But um, I've been liking the radials. The traction is definitely noticeable. And I'm taking it to the track in about a week. So that is something I've been looking forward to. Finally got a helmet. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I might slide a clip in right here. Uh, don't, uh, don't crap on me for the the moto helmet that I got. How much money does he have? Jay broke. <laughs> of me with my uh, my moto helmet, but that is no longer a thing. Got ourselves a race quip, and um, I think this is about done. Give it a couple more pumps. Now we're getting a little bit more stuff come out. Nice. Make sure that's at the bottom. Yeah. Okay. Once you guys have all the oil out, our next step is going to be to take off the oil filter. So I will grab the tool and I'll set you guys up on the hood and just, I'll just take that. I, actually, I'll just take it off with one hand. We're, we can do things like that. Let's go. So go ahead and put your 32 millimeter or whatever works for you. Maybe it might not even be that tight. You could hand tighten, hand loosen it. Get your filter off. I'm going to go ahead. I already loosened this up, but go ahead and just pull your filter off. It shouldn't be very hard at all just to twist off. 
we're gonna replace the filter and the o-ring so as you guys can see I went, went ahead and opened up the filter nice fresh little filter here it's got a new o-ring for our filter housing and uh, let's go ahead and get it put on look over here got the filter the new one bada bing bada boom as you can see the same so we've got a little bit of plastic rim on the edge more support put a little bit of oil on that o-ring give it a little bit of lubricant so we don't bind it up when we slap on that housing with the new one so flip that over i get that side in there like so boom right in there and i'm gonna go ahead and set you guys down so i can feed this around and set it where it should be all right so i went ahead and wrapped that new o-ring around took the old one off and uh went ahead and made sure it wasn't bound up or anything got the new filter in and we're gonna go ahead and screw this bad girl right back in so not really a wrong way to do this, uh, but definitely make sure that your cords aren't clipped in there like that. Like, what in the world is going on there? You guys see that? Go ahead and move that sensor out the way. Whoa, that's not good. Looks like that was clipped in there from the last one. Have to uh, give Oliver a neck for that one. Clean up that rim here. One sec, guys. Let me. All right, we're gonna go ahead and try this again without any obstructions. Actually, it looks a little bit dirty still. All right, let's go. Slip that right over the hole. Beat it in. And we'll give her a nice screw. You're gonna hear that uh, spring wind down, don't worry about that. Go ahead and uh, give it a crank down. And this, I'm not tightening this right now, this isn't even all the way down yet. It is now tightened, and you're just gonna wanna give it a quick ugga dugga. That's really all you wanna give it. Just, if you wanna go torque spec, you know, I'm pretty sure it's about five, five to ten pounds of torque whatever that Newton meter um, uh, whatever the Newton meter conversion is on that geez don't know why it took me so long to figure that out but yeah, I don't know why that sensor was down there I'm gonna go ahead and just slip that there like it belongs there but it definitely doesn't but yeah no obstructions go ahead and give it a good wipe down confirm that extra confirm on the hand tight but yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put the dipstick in there and check where we're at after I give her some lubricant. All right, this is very sus. I got you guys set up in my headlight. So let's see if this works. I'm gonna go ahead and take out this five liters of oil and uh, give it a pour. While I hold the funnel, I was the only way I could set it up and film was to be able to hold the funnel because that is not gonna hold itself. So let's take that cap off, pop the, oh, get some oil in your eye. That's always good for your cornea. And let's try to give it a pour. Woo, sheesh. Okay, I know you're supposed to hold these sideways. I have fucking only two hands here though. Got me a little bit of slack here. Oh, we love that nice green molly gin, don't we? Let this glug out here for a minute. Hope you guys got a good, nice shot of that. Oh boy. Remember, um, a job isn't done until you put this on the right way, like that. If it's upside down, you didn't do it right. Alrighty, that's why you, uh... so after letting the car run for a little bit, like a couple minutes and then shutting it off, Checking it again, it is like at the the bottom of the, the dotted lines. So I'm gonna add um, 
it, you know, it's supposed to take six. I only put five in. I'm going to add a little bit more and um, just to give it that proper amount. Basically, everybody's is going to be different. So just make sure you check the dipstick <clears throat> periodically while you're doing the oil change. Make sure uh, you let your car cool down a bit. When you check it, not necessarily get cold, but um, just let, just imagine the oil settling. Just give it time to settle. They didn't give you instructions on how to open this thing. Oh my goodness. My hands are all lubricated from the first five liters. I'm gonna need to get a freaking monkey wrench on this, dude. This is actually ridiculous. And you can't get your thumb because this part is blocking any sort of grip. Oh my, oh my God, I got it. Oh my lord. I'm basically bleeding. Man, I to file a complaint with Liquid Mario on that package design. Oh, neighbors breaking into their own cars. All right, guys, we're gonna try to not spill again. Let's go add a little bit of this. A little bit of this good green goodness. And you know, if it's a little bit too much, I'll take some out. But I always like to be better safe than sorry. Because running low on oil with the stuff I'm doing, not really what you want to do, so. Gonna leave it like that. Add it about almost the full thing. Gonna check again. That's more where we want to be. We're right at the top. It's hard to tell, but you see the three dotted lines at the very top, maybe? This is a GoPro. I'm not expecting anything crazy, but we are right below them. So that's good enough for me. I'm gonna go ahead and call that good there. Take that off. And, uh,. Shout out to Rain Man Ray because, like he says, it ain't right if it's like, unless the cap is straight. If you put your cap on like that, you really got problems, you know what I mean? So, please make sure your cap's on correctly because um, if not, your engine will blow up. We pulled out, guys. We pulled out one, two, three, four, uh, almost five liters. And that's kind of why I was saying I was gonna check the fluids as I filled because I didn't know if I was either low on oil before this change or if I didn't get it all. But um, we definitely got it all and I was just a little bit low. So check your oil. Um, even though I change this pretty periodically every 5,000 miles or less, this is actually probably 4,000 right now. Um, it's just a good idea to always check your oil. You know, it never hurts. So I'll probably be checking it a little bit more often. I mean, a quart low isn't terrible. That's okay, but um, definitely something to keep an eye on. So. That being said, I'm gonna go ahead and put a, I just threw away the oil stuff, cleaned up a little bit, and let's get into that quick uh, cabin filter change. Shouldn't be hard. <sighs> Step one, clean out your, uh, clean out your glove box real quick, so, like that. All right, you guys, so once you got your glove box cleared out, you're going to want to just very simply open up this little back compartment here which is just held on by as you can see this little clippy here it's gonna pop right out once you got this guy out of your way there's two tabs on the top and looks like three oops lost lost our source of illumination here hopefully that can stay so trying to pop those tabs out and I'm gonna set you guys down while I pop these tabs out and uh, I'll get back with the camera. And guys, the best way to get those clips off, um, if you haven't noticed that using your fingers is just gonna break your skin off, grab a set of pliers and grab the ends of it and you pull down like that. And there it comes. So let's go ahead and grab our filter out of there. See how nasty it is, huh? Oh. There it is. Take a look at that, huh, guys? Hmm. Definitely not fresh. But definitely not too bad, guys, honestly. This isn't... It's not even that bad. But we're going to change it anyway. Because we have the new one right here. So, got the new one out. Sorry for banging your guys' head against that. So this is the new one. Versus the old one. 
So you can see, you know, it definitely is doing its job of filtering nasty stuff out, you know, like there's some nasty dust. Ugh. Yeah, so 40,000 miles, guys. Not a bad idea to change this thing. This is. Ugh. Ugh. And uh, when you do go to put this in, make sure you put it facing correctly. These arrows are for the airflow down. So this is how you put it in with this down. Yeah, once you get the bottom three in first, they go in like that and then you pop the top up. Kind of like a, a TV remote control battery box. Bottom goes in first and then you clip on the top. So let's go with the bottom again. Come on, you old, you old girl. Get in your home. Get in your home. Huh. Oh, that's why. Corner's not sliding in. Yeah, so make sure this left corner doesn't slide in like it almost did to me. And uh, press it in. Click. Good to go, guys. Go ahead and load up your glove box back, and uh, you should have a fresh cabin filter now. If you were smelling some funky smells, they should be gone now. All right, you guys gonna go for a little test drive using the AC too. <laughs> Smelling that nice, fresh cabin air filter. But uh, yeah, guys, I wanna thank you for coming along with me on this journey of maintenance and uh, a little update on what's going on with the Audi and what's to come. Um, so to recap on that, it's uh, track day on the 30th of this month, so expect a video early May. And as far as um, new goodies, one thing I can say right now is, you know, that uh, new intake is coming along. So those are two things I'm looking forward to, um, as well as I'm trying to line up a couple of street races, street races in between there. So we'll see what we can what we can line up. And uh, we're almost to operating temp, so we will get a little pull in for you guys while I turn around and get the hell home. But uh, yeah, it's been a good morning. Nice little quick oil change, quick cabin filter change on the Audi. And a uh, little update for you guys. So if you needed this video for and a how-to, just know that the um, this oil change is going to be pretty much the same across the board for Mark 7 GTI, um, the Mark uh, the Mark 6 um, Jettas, you know, that any of the EA triple eight engines this is gonna this is gonna be good for it so um with that being said guys let's get a little pull in and i hope you guys enjoy the rest of your week man uh i want to thank you for the support that i've had so far on the channel it's been it's been a nice grind i've been uh been having fun interacting with you guys in the comments and i appreciate any questions comments suggestions whatever you guys got so let me know below and uh, once these trucks get out of our way, we can put this bad girl into sport mode. Ooh, ooh and uh, let get her a rip. But um, hopefully we can get a little little gap here. This opens up right here, so. This guy's dipping. Okay, here we go. Woo! Later. And of course, we are in Mexico, so if you guys are wondering, why there's no speed limits and stuff. Um, I do live in Mexico. It's pretty hot, that's why it's so hot right now. I was sweating outside. But, yeah guys, that's gonna do it. Thanks for coming along. Please, if you enjoyed this video, if you got any use from this at all, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, whatever you can do. Because you know the best thing about that is it doesn't cost anything, like it's free. So. Let me know if it sucked, dude. Put this video sucked in the comments. If this video was like, ah, oh, it was cool. Spi hey, it was cool in the comments. Let me know. Next video will be spicy. So I'll see you guys in that one later. Uh, if you guys have been keeping up on the Instagram, it's been slow on the YouTube side because I've been going through hell and high waters with this car. Not anything major, but I've just, I'm on like my third flat tire. Um, it's just, it's been hell. So. Sorry for the lack of posting. You know, I've been trying to keep the once a week at least, you know, trying to juggle everything I got going, but um, it's gonna start pumping up with all the new stuff we got going on. 